Gaspar Noé, the French avant-garde auteur, provocateur, film bro favorite, and general rascal, the man who brought us films like Enter the Void, Love, I Stand Alone, Irreversible, and Climax, is actually back with two new films this year, Vortex, featuring a surprisingly somber performance from director Dario Argento, and the visual assault Lux Eterna, the target of today's video. Released in 2022, but originally completed in 2019, Gaspar Noé's Lux Eterna, or Eternal Light in Latin, shares the visual aesthetic and disorientation of previous films like Climax and Enter the Void, but it plays out more like an art installation video essay on Noe's position on the state of the industry and the art of film itself as a medium. Luxie Turner tells the tale of two actresses, Beatrice Dahl and Charlotte Gainsbourg, who are on a film set telling stories about witches. But that's not all. Lux Eterna is also an essay on cinema, the love of film, and on-set hysterics. Gaspar Noé's Lux Eterna is an absolute assault on the senses, this fever dream, strobe light nightmare populated by chaotic conversations, on-set screaming. The whole movie takes place on a set. I guess I should introduce myself before we jump into this. My name is Justin. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate it. Hit that like button, subscribe if you will, check out my other videos, da 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 da. Let's get back into the video. The entirety of this movie takes place on a film set, which is something I do love uh, in movies. I love when movies take place in the filmmaking world, and especially when they're actually on set. And that's basically what this entire movie is, just basically throwing you in the center of a chaotic, disorganized film set about uh, the burning of witches in medieval times. That's essentially what the movie is. It's a very loose plot that sort of just follows the actresses as they navigate the film set, going from different rooms to different rooms, Pretty much the entire film is in a split screen, so you're seeing two different characters or two different perspectives of the same character at all times. It's really chaotic. There's very little score in the movie. It's basically just, uh, just chaos, the entire movie. If you've seen a, a Gaspar Noé movie, you kind of know he his films thrive on chaos and disorientation. Uh, he plays a lot with sound design and insane lighting, and he takes it to another level in uh, Lux Eterna with a finale, a 20 minute finale that is nonstop colorful strobe lights uh, until the movie reaches its final moment. So uh, a little warning out there, this does feature a full on 20 minute strobe light sequence, uh, which is par for the course for a Gaspar Noé film. The movie starts out kind of similar to the way Climax does. You just have two characters just sitting there having a completely unrelated conversation to whatever's happening in the rest of the movie. They're on set talking about movies they've done and we weird experiences and funny stories from movie sets. And then they're called to set, and that's where the movie just sort of takes off, and you find out, you figure out that this movie is, uh, there's a struggle for power, for the director and the cinematographer and the the uh, the lead actresses, they're all fighting each other. It just leads to this strobe light climax with the three actresses who all play themselves, by the way. Every character in this movie plays themselves. Uh, and the movie just kind of finishes up with Charlotte Gainsbourg on a pillar, you know, about to be burned on the cross on this film set. Now, as far as this movie goes, first of all, it's only 52 minutes long. I did not know that it was 52 minutes long. And when the movie ended, I, uh, I was honestly a little disappointed because I felt like that's when the movie was really going to take off. That's kind of how Gaspar Noé's films are. They reach a just absolute fever pitch. Some crazy shit happens. Even if there's not a full on narrative, there's usually something that happens at the end. And that's really the issue I had with this one is this movie had such potential, but then the movie just sort of ends. Uh, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I'm a big fan of uh, a lot of Gaspar's films. I have Enter the Void here, I Stand Alone, Irreversible, Climax, which is probably my favorite of his films. Being that he released two films, he made two films back to back, very close to one another, I almost wish he would have just set this on the back burner a little bit until he had a full script and fully realized what this movie could have been because he could have went so many places by the end of this movie. I had all kinds of predictions of what might happen, uh, like it was gonna get really fucked up, maybe somebody was gonna get burned on the stake or this shit was going to get thrown into like murderous chaos, but that never really happens. The film is intercut with these quotes by people who I was not familiar with about the kind of pretentious nature of filmmakers and directors as dictators and all of this stuff. It was a little up its own ass at that point. And I felt like Gaspar had a lot of things he just wanted to say and needed to fit some sort of narrative to it. Uh, maybe witches being burned at the stake was uh, maybe his comment on cancel culture or people saying what he does in film shouldn't be done. I don't know. But um, either way, as a narrative, it didn't really work. As a visual experience, it worked kind of. 
Um, I would not recommend this film to anybody else, but pretty much hardcore fans of Gaspar Noé, um, if people even have heard of this one. If you are a fan of his films, I think you may dig it. This is probably, honestly, my least favorite Gaspar film. It just didn't feel complete to me. I felt like it uh, squandered what could have been uh, a really interesting film had it had a different climax, because up until when it ends at that 52 minute mark, it felt like very much like a Gaspar Noé film where you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop and something insane to happen. And we do get some stunning visuals um, towards the end of the movie, but it just doesn't really lead to much. So I can't say I'd recommend this to a wide audience at all. If you are a fan of his other work, um, I would check it out. Otherwise, I could say this might be safe to skip, but um, that's my thoughts on uh, Gaspar Noe's Lux Eterna, guys. I'm gonna keep cranking them out. I'm trying to get as many reviews out as I can, talk about as many films uh, as I can for you guys, so I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks, guys. I think we are done here. <laughs> Stay weird. Remember to always be yourself, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.